the early church used four rules to decide which books they believed would be considered canon. The writing was authored by an apostle, prophet or someone closely connected with one or more prophets or apostles. The writing clearly evidenced the confirming power and presence of God. The message was consistent with other recognized scripture. The writing was widely accepted by the church from an early date. In 367 AD, Anatheus, Bishop of Alexandria, announced the version of the New Testament canon that we use today. His list of books was later canonized by the church at the councils of Hippo in AD 393 and Catheridge in AD 397. By the last half of the 4th century, Latin was rapidly becoming the main language of the church. The diversity of the numerous texts of the old Latin Bible that had appeared were creating confusion and controversy. They posed a challenge to scholars when defending established doctrines and even resulted in charges of heresy. To alleviate the situation, Pope Damaris I commissioned Jerome to develop a new, authoritative Latin translation in AD 382. Jerome, a scholar of ancient languages, referenced Latin, Greek and Hebrew texts to develop his translation, the Vulgate. After his death, numerous attempts at revision and recession were made, resulting in over 8,000 Vulgate manuscripts. In spite of this, Jerome's translation remained essentially unchallenged for over a thousand years throughout the Middle Ages and remains the official Latin translation of the Roman Catholic Church. The Middle Ages was a time of standardization. This was because Emperor Constantine ordered the reproduction of 50 Christian texts. The Masorites, who were a group of Jewish scribe scholars working between 500 and 1000 AD, developed a system of annotation to standardize the Jewish Bible. The main focus of the Masorites was to preserve and writing the oral tradition of Judaism by correcting the pronunciation, paragraph, and verse divisions of biblical manuscripts. They also engaged in moderate textual criticism, and the result of their efforts was a standardized version of the Hebrew translation of the Old Testament. Adhelm was the first bishop of Shiborn in Dorset. Shortly after 700 AD, he translated the Psalter into Old English. It was the first straightforward English translation of any portion of the Bible. Egbert of York translated the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke into Old English for the first time. The Venerable Bede was the greatest scholar in England in his day. He wrote a translation of the Gospel of John, which was probably intended as a supplement to the three translated by Egbert. According to the traditional accounts, Bede finished his translation in the very hour of his death in AD 735. In the 10th century, Aldrich the scribe wrote a word-for-word -word translation into Old English from Latin text. Aldred's annotations comprise the oldest complete translation of the Gospels into English. The Wireless Bible was the first Bible to be translated completely into English, and this was during a time when English was still changing as a language. English was evolving due to the Norman-French influences following the invasion of England in 1066. The Gutenberg Bible was the first book to ever be mass-produced. It marked the start of an age of the printed book and was widely praised for the high aesthetic and artistic qualities. The Gutenberg Bible is an edition of the Latin Vulgate, printed by Johannes Gutenberg in Mainz, Germany. Gutenberg used the knowledge of metals he had gained as a goldsmith to develop a method of casting metal letters which would be arranged in forms in order to print pages of text. 48 copies or substantial portions of copies have survived. They are considered to be among the most valuable books in the world. In 1525, William Tyndall undertook an English translation of the New Testament from the original Greek text. Tyndale's translation was the first English printed Bible. Tyndale was forced to print in his New Testament translation in Clogney in 1526 due to persecution from Henry VIII. In spite of his faith and determination, he still received a charge of heresy and was burnt at the stake. He was praised as a martyr of rhetoric in Greek, Hebrew, Latin and German, and his skillful translation method has become to be known as the dynamic equivalence. The King James Version of the Bible was completed in 1611, and it was the third English version of the Bible. The work was performed by over 40 scholars who were instructed to follow the Bishop's Bible. The King James Version was not a new translation, it was a revision, appointed to be read in churches. It is considered a towering achievement of English literature as both beautiful and scholarly.